had a hard time concentrating on what they had come for. Thanks to Joseph, the ceremony had gone smoothly. He purchased the two turtle doves and offered the sacrifice that redeemed this firstborn to come home with them. And she had undergone the rites of purification the law prescribed for women after childbirth. It wasn't until the next day, as they came in sight of Michael's house, that she said, Do you suppose the Lord God thought we needed confirmation of who this child is? Or was that all just for Anna and Simeon? Joseph had thought for a moment, both maybe, and remember, all this was happening in his temple. I think Simeon and Anna were representing all Israel, and it may be their job to pass on the word that the Lord God has kept his holy promise and sent his son as Messiah. That's scary, Mary said in a small voice. Wonderful, but scary. We're only two people. And we have to bring up this child to save Israel? Joseph, how can we do that? Hush, love, he had said gently. How many times have you reminded me that we are not alone in this? That the Lord God is watching over us and protecting us. That nothing is going to happen to this child that he hasn't planned. Have you forgotten? I have it, and it's all true. I promise you, we'll be fine, and so will he. That had been her reminder for the next several years of what she had come to call the quiet time, between the tumultuous beginning and, well, she didn't know quite what was going to follow this life of preaching and teaching Jesus was leading now. He was the Messiah, but he didn't seem to want people to know about it. At least, he wasn't announcing it. He seemed, these days, to be making a point to tell people he healed not to say what he had done. Also, she began to notice the growing hostility of leadership. Scribes, Pharisees, maybe even the priests, though she didn't know that. Not for certain. Well, time enough for that when it happened. Having finished up the vegetables, she tucked up her skirts and went out to weed her tiny garden. She'd always found work in the earth, soothing, and today was no exception. Her mind returned to that day of his presentation. To the evening when she thought everything new and upsetting was over that all they had to do was to go back to Nazareth and let the whole set of experiences sink in as they learned to live with each other and Jesus and to teach him how to be a good man and faithful child of God. But she had been wrong, as it turned out. They'd gone in, had their supper, finished their packing, and just blow out the lamp when they heard a quiet knock at the door. Joseph picked up a length of firewood and Mary snatched up Jesus, wrapped him in his blanket and held him tightly to her heart. Joseph cleared his throat and asked, Who's there? Magi from the east came a startling reply in heavily accented Hebrew. We watched his star rise in the east and we followed it here. It stands over your roof now. We have come to pay homage to the infant who is king of the Jews. Mary and Joseph looked wondering at each other, and Joseph unbarred the door. Seeing the strangers in fine clothing, Joseph put down the stove lid and stepped outside, turned to face the house, and gazed up at the sky. Then he smiled and turning, ushered them in, nodding to Mary and mouthing, It's there all right, huge. When the Magi saw her, they immediately knelt and put coffers at her feet and touched their foreheads to the ground in profound respect. 
In response, she opened the blanket and stooped, and they rose to their knees and gazed at him with their hearts shining through their eyes. They told some of their adventures, including their encounter with Herod and the scribes. Frightened to death, they had described the king. They stayed that night, of course, but well before dawn they had awakened, conferred with one another in their own language, and then told Joseph they were leaving at once. We have had a warning, a dream. We must not go back to Herod. We must take another route when we go home. We will leave at once. We think it best. Wondering and a little frightened, Mary fixed a quick meal and offered them food for the road, but they refused it, saying they had plenty and vanished as silently as they had come. Mary and Joseph had gone back to bed to sleep, but less than half an hour later, Joseph had sat up and shaken her awake. We have to leave now, he announced in a whisper. I'll pack our things on the donkey. If you take care of the food, the odds and ends and the baby, we need to be gone as soon as we can, she nodded, and they found themselves moving silently down the road some 20 minutes later. Angel, Mary asked, and Joseph nodded. We're going to Egypt. He says we have to stay there until it's safe. Herod means to search for Jesus and kill him. Kill him, she had explained. Why? What's he ever done to Herod? Joseph glanced at her. Been born, he answered. At least that's my guess. I think he sees Jesus as a threat to him. After all, the Magi did say he was the new king of the Jews. That can't have made Herod exactly comfortable. Being king is his job. And he's just been told he's fired or will be when the boy comes of age. I guess, she said, but Egypt, oh, it's far away and all. But the Lord God will take care of us. I know that. But Egypt, it's odd, don't you think? Israel's salvation in Jacob's day became Israel's prison, and Moses had to free us. And now Egypt has become Israel's salvation again? The Lord God is a lot like that, her husband said, smiling. He takes care of his own no matter what anyone plans. And he seems to like these connections, I guess. Anyway, that's what he told the angel to tell me, so that's 